we've talked a lot about discrete time dynamical systems. Okay. We've learned where they come from, how to analyze them, and you know, we've we've done a couple toy models of systems where they're used. So like the lung model is great because we only care about what happens from breath to breath. Okay, so discrete time dynamical systems are great for modeling systems where the measurements only really matter at discrete times, right? Discrete time measurement. What happens in between those measurements isn't really important for the questions we're trying to answer. Okay, but other systems, maybe that's not true. Right? Other systems might need measurements at all times. Maybe you do care about what happens at all times, not just the two or three discrete points in time that you're measuring at, but you know all the times in between where you're not measuring matter too for your system. Right? And for a good model of your system, it's important to capture what happens in between your measurements. Right? So other systems need measurements at all times, what we would call continuous time. Okay. Maybe you can't physically measure it at all times, but you could write down a model that then describes what happens in between your measurements. Okay, so a nice example of a system that you know is a continuous time system, but is often measured discreetly would be you know the height of of yourself as a kid, or maybe your kids if you have, right? And so maybe your parents, or or maybe you're doing this for your kids now, where you have you know your doorway in your house and you measure the heights at different points in time. Right? So you measure these heights discreetly. Right? But humans don't just like jump between heights. Right? They grow continuously, very, very slowly over time. Right? They grow slowly and continuously. It's just often measured discreetly. You know, you mark down your height every year, doorway of your house. Okay. But if you want to ask questions like, you know, how much uh, did I grow? How much? Did, did the kid grow? Okay. Grow here. Right? You can answer this question with the discrete time measurements or your discrete time dynamical system. Right? Let's say they grew one or two inches over one year. Right? Then you can ask, okay, how fast did they grow? Did they grow that year? Right? You want to ask questions about speed. Maybe that's important for some reason. Well, how fast is a kid growing? Well, if you only took those measurements every year, then all you'd be able to say here is that they grew two inches per year on average, right? Because you only have their height one year to the next. So you can only say, okay, during that year they grew two inches. They grew two inches over the year on average. Assume that every day they were growing, you know, at this rate, two inches per year. Okay. So if you were to like divide a year by however many days are in a year, 365, then that would tell you the number of inches. So you could read this estimate the growth rate per day, right? Say, okay, two inches for one year times three, sorry, one year, divided by 360 days. Okay, and that would give you two inches over 360 days, which would be some number of inches per day, right? But when you're doing this, you're assuming, right? But this is already assuming a model, right? a model of constant growth. Right? You're assuming that average rate growth is the same at all points in time throughout that year. Okay. And so if you wanted to ask other questions like how fast did they grow that day or month? Right? You wanted to get the actual growth rate that day then you would have to get more data or a model like this or 
model. Continuous time model. Okay. It's that continuous time model, then you could take the average growth rate over that day to ask, answer this question. Right, so here we assumed a continuous time model where you're growing at the constant rate two inches per year. And then we just divide it by the number of days to figure out what you know what the growth rate that day would be. Okay. But if we want to, you know, maybe you grew faster in the first half of the year than in the second half of the year, right? You need more data or you need a model that accounts. And then you could ask these questions. Okay, so let's start with an example where we do have a function. Okay, so let's go back to our classic bacterial population growth example, right? We have these bacteria, they're sitting in a petri dish, and let's say we start with E0 equals 1 million cells, or units, millions of cells, right? And the growth rate is 2, and we've done this one enough times that I can say, okay, we, we have decided that this can be modeled by the function p of t is equal to 2.0 to the t, okay? And so here it is graphed, right? Right, this is t here. T. Okay, and we can ask questions, you know, we can, we can get into these average rates of change questions. Now that we have a nice function that describes what's happening continuously in time, not just at discrete points in time, like these dots here, but continuously at all times, we know what the population is. Right, so we can ask questions like, how fast is the population growing? Okay, so, you know, how fast is it growing? Well, that depends on where we look. It, this is changing over time, and it's not growing at the same speed at all times, right? It's slower here than it is there. It's getting faster as time goes on. So we have to divide this up in time. So let's say, let's find out the rates every hour. So then we would make this little chart here, time versus population. And then here we'll track the change. Okay, our change in population is delta P, where delta means change in. So then be P at time T minus P at time one, one hour before. Okay, and then we can use the change to compute the average rate of change. To answer this question, how fast is the population? Okay, the average rate of change over some time interval would be delta p, delta p over delta t, right? Change in population over change in time, right? So p at minus p at time t minus one, an hour before, divided by the change in time, which will be one hour for these intervals, okay? And this is a million cells. Okay, so then let's look at our function, right? At time zero, our population is one, and there's no change since we're not thinking about what happened time before. Right? We're ignoring negative time here. Right? At time one, one hour, right? we this graph gives us two. Right? At time one hour, population is two million. The change from hour one is plus one million. Okay. So then the average rate of change would then be one million new cells per hour, right? On average over this hour long window, right? So if we were to draw a nice line between these, oops, between these two, right? Between hours zero and one, we're saying that this if this was changing constantly over this interval, this would have slope, you know, one, right, one million per hour, right? It's actually different than that, but we're kind of assuming that it's changing constantly over this interval, and that average rate of change is, you know, just the change divided by the time. Okay. So then at time two hours, right, our population is now at four million. Right, so since hour one, we've gone up by two million cells. So our new average rate of change over this time interval, right, between hours one and hour two, right, it's a new average rate of change here, and it's going to be our change in population over change in time, plus two million. Okay, so 
okay at time three, eight million, which is a change of plus four, which gives us plus four million power as our average rate. And at time four, population is 16, that's this last one here, which is a change of plus eight million, which gives us a rate of plus eight. Okay, so the answer to the question, how fast is the population growing, depends on, you know, which time interval we're looking at, right? Between hours zero and one, the average rate of change is one million per hour. So we answer, this population is growing at about one million per hour during these two hours. But between the next two hours, right, between hours one and two, it's growing faster, right? It's growing at two million per hour on average, right? So this answer depends on when in time we're looking. And it's also going to depend on how finely we're looking. Right? If we look at every half hour, okay, let me else. Right? If we have t, t of t population change, and our average rate of change. Right now, our change, if we're looking every half hour, is going to be p of t minus p of t minus half an hour, right? We're looking, trying to estimate this rate of change on half hour, inter half hour intervals. Now we're looking at a smaller jump in time, so we're gonna look at a different change, right? Population at time t minus population at time t minus a half, right? Just a half hour before, smaller instant in time before. So our average rate of change is delta p over t, right? This p of t minus p of t five, and now our time interval is half, as opposed to a full hour. We divide by 0.5. Okay, so let's look at our graph again. We'll start at time zero again, one million, ignore change because we don't have anything to compare it to. And then at time half an hour, our population, grab this point here and look at the graph or plug into our function, right? Two to the two, I plug in half an hour there, I get 1.412. So our change from hour zero is plus four, sorry, plus 0 0.4. 1, 4, so then our rate of change on average over this interval would be 0 0.4142 divided by the time interval, a half. So it's really plus 0.8182. Right, millions of cells per hour. Millions. Okay. So the rate of change was 0.4, and then we divide by half, so this number is bigger. But it's the average rate of change over this small interval in time. As we look forward in time, right, we go to half an hour forward. Gives us one hour. Our population at this time is two. So our change from then from 1.412 to 2 is plus 0 0.588. Okay, and then we divide by our half hour interval, get 1.1716 as our new average rate. Right, so it's faster during the second half hour than the first half hour. Right, so we're looking at the same time interval as this one. Right, same time interval. From 0 to 1, when we look every hour, is this same interval in time. Okay, but you'll notice that when we looked over this interval, when we took our average rate of change over that whole interval, we got 1 million per hour. Okay, and now when we look over the same interval, but now we're looking kind of more finely, we find that actually it's slower in the first half hour. Right? It's slower than our average rate of growth over the whole interval. And then on the second half hour, it's faster. Right? So it's really giving us a different picture of what's going on in this function. Right? It's really showing us that you know, if we looked every hour, we'd say, okay, the average rate of change there is a million. Right? But if I look at the half hours, I actually find that, well, it actually grew faster in the second half hour than the first half hour. So on average, maybe it changed by one million, but really it changed by you know, less than a million an hour for the first half hour, and then more than a million per hour for the second half hour. Okay? 
and then it results in a net change of one million because those time intervals are different. Okay. And we could keep going with this, and we'll find kind of similar conclusions. Right? If I look at time 1.5, right? I look at the population at that time, it's 2.824. Right? The change in population there, right? population at time 1.5 minus population at time 1. Right, 1.5 minus 0 0.5 gives me population 1.5 minus population 1. I think this is my delta P. Right, that gives me 2.8284 minus 2, 0, which gives me 0 0.8284. I gained 0 0.8284 millions of cells over this half hour interval, right? So then my average rate of change here, delta P over delta P, is 0 0.8284 over half an hour, 0 0.5 hours, millions of cells, right? So that gives me 1.656 million cells per hour, as my average rate of change over this new power interval. So I'll put plus one. Okay. And so, you know, this will give us a better sense of what's going on in terms of answering this original question, right? How fast is the population growing? Well, it depends on where in time you look and how closely you're looking at the function, right? If you're trying to answer this question by using average rate of changes, you're going to get you know, a more accurate answer to your question if you look over a finer time interval compared to where you want to look in time. If you want to know how fast the population is growing at time 1, you could say, OK, well, between 0 and 1, it's plus 1 million per hour. Between hours 1 and 2, it's plus 2 million per hour. So the average rate of change at 1 would be somewhere between those, maybe. right? Or if I look at a finer interval, right, every half hour, then around 1, I have these two rates here, right? Between 0.5 and 1, it's plus 1.1716 is my rate of change. But between 1 and 1.5, it's 1.656. If I want to know exactly how fast it's moving at 1, I would take, you know, maybe the average of these. Or I would take a smaller interval, okay? And so that's going to be the idea of limits and derivatives is we're going to take smaller and smaller intervals around whatever point in time we're interested in estimating the rate at, and we'll take the limit of that sequence of average rates to get our rate instantaneously at that point in time. Okay, and so we'll go into that more in, in the next set of videos, because this one is just to introduce the rate of change, the average rate of change.